Friday here with uh, Dr. Jamie Meyer, who was uh, uh, gracious enough to give us a little bit of, of his time. We met with him last year, showed us some previews of the Erod stuff. We have a whole lot more this year. We have, I think, no less than three new, or, or three variants that we can show off. Two and a half. Two and a half, one, let's say. One's kind of yeah, it's in limbo, but modified. Uh, a lot of good stuff coming out of GM Performance. This Take is where it. we started last this year, in the 55 E-Rod project. That's right. right. That's right. What's different? So this is the same engine. You know, the product is the same, except the message is really different this year because now we have an EO from the California Air Resources Board. You know, last year we showed this off as a specially constructed vehicle solution, and as you guys well know, there's a lot of concerns about the future of hot rodding in California and several other states. It's not just a California issue. We worked uh, with SEMA, their lobbyists, and then our own GM certification group, which is anchored by Dave Garrett and uh, Randy Harvey, and we have an EO number. It's D-126-30. Remember which gives this uh, compliance in any vehicle in California, 96 and older, basically pre-OBD2. Now, that's a big deal because right now the only thing that's legal to swap an engine in has got to be an older than a 74 model. So we've just opened up 20 years of cars. It's 8.8 .8 million cars that were registered in those model years last year, and you got to figure another 10 million of cars that have just been abandoned or sitting around. This is really big news for this industry. Not only because you can repower these cars, but now the people that restore these cars and sell tires and batteries and glass and paint them and people that do websites to tell stories about cars, you know, it's gonna shake up this whole industry. This is the LS3, 430 horsepower, and basically everything you see. So you get the manifolds, the cats, the evaporative controls, even a gas pedal. The harness, the custom calibration, and a very detailed instruction manual. This sells street price for under $8,000. Two year, 50,000 mile warranty on a brand new Corvette engine. Brand new, warranty. Yeah. And instructions, by the way, and instructions so Matt can install it. Well, That's most key. people can install it. All right, let's, okay. let's go with that. All right, so uh, this looks like uh, uh, Ford F-150, early Ford <laughs> F-150. Am I, am I no, off? I think you're off a little bit. Try oh, wait, Ford's Ford's next, right? I, I apologize. Wrong booth. Wrong Wrong booth. booth. All right, let me resync. Uh, uh, take it. Well, this is, a, this is a wonderful vehicle assembled by Lingenfelter Performance. Uh, great partners of ours to showcase the 5.3 E-Rod. So today, two big launches from GM Performance Parts. The 5.3, right out of the Silverado, and then we'll see the LSA here in a minute. This is 315 horsepower, 335 foot-pounds of torque. You know, this is great for those trucks that you're restoring, the off-road vehicles, and this one is the affordable end of the E-Rod portfolio. This one's going to sell for under $6,000. Same warranty, same packaging. Yeah, brand I think new the, I think the warranty is, is it's important because a lot of these guys building the crate motors, it's, you know, you buy it, it's like, you know, the, the, the pseudo warranty you get is, oh, if you turn it on, you did something wrong. So this is a nice package because what you have is GM backing you for uh, warranty work, parts that are available at GM dealers, potentially off the shelf at any auto parts store in America, nothing funky here. These engines have the OBD2 port, so you can just take this to a, a GM dealer and get a, a diagnostic done or anything like that if there's yeah, something. Yeah. yeah, it doesn't have full OBD2 function. I gotta be careful how I answer that, but yeah, you can absolutely run a Tech 2 on this and get a good idea of what's going on. But this, this vehicle looks like a nicely restored 55 Chevrolet pickup, but it's it's actually a repop body from Dynacorn, which we license through GM Restoration Parts. So you've got a brand new 55 Chevy. This is a specially constructed vehicle built on a Trailblazer SS chassis. So there's some more modern conveniences with brakes and steering and, and what Suspension's a little up. Yeah, it's got our new Supermatic transmission and controller back in, back in the engine. So this is a wonderful vehicle to just jump in it starts up, it runs, it idles just like a brand new Silverado, and just go get some ice cream with a wife. Well guys, this is a, just a knockout vehicle, and again, it brings the sophistication of a new Chevrolet vehicle into this industry. So if you're restoring one, or if you're building a specially constructed vehicle, you can leverage that E-Rod portfolio and uh, get all that convenience in one package. All right, well now you've probably guessed what uh, kind of car we have, but maybe not clearly seen all the, the pieces of it. It's not a regular Corvette, it's one of the uh, rarest of rare Corvettes, the Grand Sport. Uh, back in the day, this was the alleged Cobra Killer, which I think it did for a while till GM pulled the uh, the ripcord on racing, which is kind of a shame because 
Uh, that was the uh, glory days. Good doctor. I will give us a little bit of uh, the background of this. And the, the one thing that I do want to know is, uh, uh, how can I get a demo of this car? Some of those super performance guys yeah. over here? This is the LSA in all its glory. 556 horsepower, 551 foot-pounds of torque. Uh, you know, that puts a 4,200-pound CTSV in the low 12s. This car weighs 2,400 pounds. I mean, this thing, yeah, but just pure dynamite. Cracking into the 1090s, maybe, with some stickies? Like I said, we've bookended the E-Rod portfolio, so this is the higher end. This is your supercharged exotic car engine. It comes in around street price $15,000, so brand new warranty, full E-Rod package, the harness, the controller, everything plugs in. What I love about this is that we're showing it in a kit car from Superformance that is a licensed product from General Motors. This is as close as you're ever going to get to buying a brand new 63 Grand Sport again. So if the Ford guys can have a Cobra kit car, we can have a Grand Sport. And I, the Superformance guys have really delivered with this thing. By the way, I, I've always loved this car and I love that it's a competitor to you know, the, the 427 Cobra in that area. It was always sad that uh, the uh, heads up competition stuff got yanked back in the day, but um, you see pictures of these things racing and they were just starting to give some heat. And I, I dig that, I don't care what it is. It's about the competition. And for me, uh, I, I just always have loved this particular model car because it's odd, it's a little out there. But this car is the first one in the United States. This was built in South Africa in the Superformance factory. It has been engineered to accept several of the GM Performance Parts crate engines. For us, it made total sense to put the top of the E-Rod portfolio in it, uh, 556 horse. We're going to submit the EO for this immediately. This is a this is a green engine, if you will. You know, we haven't even we've been talking about this car for 10 minutes. I just, you know, I want that. I want the E-Rod to just be an accepted emissions compliant. It's clean as a new GM vehicle. It starts, it runs, and idles. And in this car, it's absolutely going to kick ass. The LS3 is available immediately. You can buy that at GMPerformanceParts.com. The 5.3 will be available at the end of this month. The LSA is coming uh, by the end of the year. So by January 1st, you'll be able to buy the LSA. And then we haven't talked about the LS7. That's another project we have out in the wings. Uh, that'll be out in early 2011. I'm a huge fan of the LS7 because it's a 427. Yeah. And I want to steal that Cobra market from my counterparts. And it's a naturally aspirated engine that's just incredible. I think you're be, so you're saying that could be an E-Rod motor as well? Absolutely, absolutely. We want to do an LS7. I, I'm digging this. I, I got to tell you, I'm excited about this. Jeff, did you catch the excitement? <laughs> nice. Broke the fourth wall, third wall, how's that work? I don't, I don't know. Yeah, guys, if you want more information on this car, head over to gmperformanceparts.com. We've got a little E-Rod sightlet set up. You can find out information about the entire portfolio of E-Rod engines and about this gorgeous 63 Grand Sport. If they type your name, they get any kind of discount or anything like that? I'll give you the code off here. All right. I've checked out the site. It's very cool. And you'll be able to buy these engines right off of your website from your local dealer. You can buy it online. You can pick it up at the dealer. Right. That's right. Or they'll ship it to your door. I think he wants to drive one of these. I'm getting I that know. feel. I, I, I think he's ready to sell some of his crap so he can actually buy one of these things. I just want to know, will it take a Mark IV big block? Because that's... Yes, it will. Then we're good. OK. We made it to the Ford booth. Lots of always cool stuff happening up here. Great cars, fun people to talk to. And uh, Jamie. Yeah. OK, we're here. we're here in front of uh, 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 a bevy yeah. of performance vehicles. Uh, Ken Block, Super X, Rally X car. I got a ride in uh, one of these uh, a few months back. Tanner Faust uh, gave us a roll in one of those, and uh, they wouldn't take us over the jump. Uh, bitchin' stuff. And I want to say thanks for all the Ford racing stuff you guys are doing and bringing out to the public. Tell us what's new Ford-wise, racing, Fiesta, Focus, there's all kinds of talk about new yep. team support, stuff like that going on. Hit us. Wow, you call this bitchin'. You know, you, that was your words, not my words. I'll have to agree. I happen to have the best job in the world because I got to go to the Fiesta Rally School. Yes, we have a rally school at Team O'Neill. Now, I grew up autocrossing, whereby you go in a straight line, you brake, and you turn, and you make sure you're basically in control. You, you don't hit cones. You don't hit cones, okay. and I'm good at that. And then I go to the Fiesta Rally School. We get into a little Fiesta, and I'm thinking, all right, let's see what this 120-some horsepower car can do. And in rally, the intent there is you gotta go in, induce oversteer, so the car can basically turn on you as you spin around in a hairpin and go out. I tell you, 
It's the most exciting form of racing I've ever experienced. So, so you've never driven in Los Angeles in the rain? <laughs> because that's every day. That's every day. <laughs> well, you know, if you've seen Jim Gymkhana, that's not Ken Block. That's me going to work every morning. Well, you owe somebody a new set of tires in that last <laughs> video that I saw, because clearly those tires got flattened out. And yeah. if uh, if you guys have not seen, I think, Jim Connor 3 yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, in France at, at one of the vintage races, nutty, crazy fast. I mean, we kid a lot, we're having a lot of fun, but really underlying all this is um, there's a lot of credibility and a lot of agility to the car that was designed by Ford. Although it's new to the United States, it's had decades, generations of racing into Europe, and it's been all forms of racing. There's been a Fiesta spec road racing car, and there's been a rally car, and now the Fiesta is the official WRC car starting next year. So the platform is very, very credible. Tell us what we're doing with the performance, because we want to know, when can I buy the Fiesta turbo kit, the roll cage, the you know the the 42-inch lift suspension so I can do my own jumps over the Coliseum? What's cooking with performance and the Fiesta and some yep. of the other products? So we talked earlier on the fact that Fiesta has been born in Europe and has been racing in Europe. Well, let's not let's not give the Europeans too much credit. Let's say that without America uh, and Ford, they wouldn't have been able to build the European Fiesta to bring back to America. Oh, I like this guy. <laughs> Alan, just, Alan Mulally. <laughs> we're, we're, we have so little here that we make. Let's say that, Yeah. let's well, take some credit. Well, let me tell you, at Ford we say something, called, we have something called One Ford. You know, there's a European uh, team that develops small, exciting, fun to drive, high, uh, high quality cars. And we, in America, are starting to, you know, the consumers, it's showing more interest in having more fuel efficient cars. So, we're bringing Fiesta and Focus to the States. You asked about performance modifications. So, we announced today that we're bringing the R2 Rally Package. The Rally R2 package. Rally Package. Yeah, in Europe, there is a, um, a rally spec class, an R2 package Fiesta that people buy from M Sport and race around countries around the world. We are adding the United States as one of those countries with an R2 based package. Basically, R2 is made up of a, you know, 50, 60 parts that come from M Sport, starting with a modification to the engine. Carbon fiber stickers, things like that. Well, it's not, it's I'm not, just trying to get a yeah, feel for yeah, what I'm getting here. Yeah, basically, it takes the uh, uh, power up from 120 horsepower to up to 168 horsepower. That's Basically, good. bigger turbo. Uh, uh, you'll have a, a five uh, sequential transmission. You'll have a roll cage, uh, ventilator, uh, rear disc brakes. I mean, the list goes on and on and on. It's all on the site at FordRacing.com. But basically, it takes a stock Fiesta and turns it into a race prepared, front wheel drive uh, class in Rally America. Go out and kick some B U T T. We can say ass here because this is, in fact, the internet and we do what yeah. we want. Listen, we don't really care. And we Nobody don't care. Watches. Tell us what's new with the Mustang because yep. every year the Mustang um, has done phenomenal. First year it came out, love the styling. The next year it came out, uh, the next kind of generation of it, uh, changed the bias up. This year was motor jobs. And I want to say the motor hauls ass. Been in uh, a guy's new GT, uh, dynamite. Yep, yep. And so, good mileage. And yep. I'm going, look, I'm a guy driving a diesel excursion. I get 14 miles a gallon. I don't care about mileage, but now I can have some of this cake and eat it too. I like having power and efficiency and mileage all kind of bundle up. Well, first of all, we're standing in a very, very opportunistic spot because if you pan over the Fiesta and look over there, uh, there's I a got, bunch of people taking there's pictures there's a of bunch of screen. people, and maybe if you focus on uh, four letters over there, boss. Really, that's the boss is back, and then. Uh, and it's Boss 302. Right? Anything to do with Parnelli Jones in there? Because yeah. Parnelli Jones rocks. I tell you, uh, my very first new car was a 1987 5-liter Mustang GT. Made 100? No, no, 225 oh. horsepower, and I thought I was king. You fill it up. You're a badass. I was badass. T-tops on, <laughs> hair in the wind, no, Elvis no, glasses. It was, it was convertible down, white car, and I'm just cruising. And then I don't remember the fuel economy on my car in 1987. I bet you, I bet you it was like 13, 14 miles yeah. to the gallon. Well, I now have a 2011 5 liter Mustang GT. Convertible, red, I love my car, and it gets 25 miles to the gallon and 412 horsepower. We've doubled the horsepower and almost double the fuel economy. Now, can you give me five here? <laughs> All right. There's a role for regulation. There's Absolutely. a role for this industry here in the aftermarket. There's a role for many things. So we at Ford, as I just showed in my example, have taken a car that once made 13 miles to the gallon, 225 horsepower, and basically doubled them both. 
So you can have power and fuel economy, and you gotta have a great car. So technology I is a technology is advanced. Uh, we at Ford are making sure that we're providing exciting designs, great cars. But you know, it all starts with passion. I mean, there's a lot of passion inside Ford. And uh, earlier today, Edsel Ford was talking about the boss is back. And we have it's like basically someone whose name is on the building, talking about the passion of the car automobile. Uh, all of our senior management are excited and have a lot of passion for our product. I have a lot of excitement for what we build. So when passion exists, great cars come out. Very much appreciate you giving some uh, some insight to what's cooking on at Ford. The Fiesta, the performance group, and all the stuff that's happening here at SEMA today. Yep. I'm sure we could talk for another hour and have a lot more fun. But you got to do your job, and we got to go get a couple of beers. What? So shoot out your site and uh, let it rip. Well, thank you. Uh, everything I talked about can be found on either www.ford.com or fordracing.com. So thank you for this opportunity. Jamie, to appreciate talk about it. All the thank you. Thank you. And go Ford. <laughs> nice sell. We're chatting with Eric from StopTech, you. and you have a couple new kits, two new kits specifically yeah. for StopTech brakes. Yeah, two, two product lines that we brought out. One is our what we call our Turing brake systems over here. And what we're doing with the Turing system, it's, a, it's sort of an incremental upgrade from our uh, a step up between a stock performance upgrade and a complete big brake kit. So what, we're using... What uh, kind of cars would you, would you find these kits available from you guys on? Things we're looking at are, are mostly... Uh, well, all around, but domestic and, and import high performance stuff. I mean, some of the things we do now are like Acura RSX, Honda, import uh, Civic domestic. SI, WRX. Uh, we'll probably do something for the, um, we do the 300C uh, Chrysler LX platform cars. Anything on like 65, 66 Mustang stuff? We, we don't focus too much. We're mostly late model high performance, but you know, there's, at, always, there's always room for, for hot rods down the we road. Can, we can't catch a break getting, trying to get some free stuff out of these guys, man. <laughs> I, don't, I don't get it. So these are available on, a, uh, on late model performance vehicles? Yeah, late model high performance. We're trying to hit around a under 2,000 price point. 1,500, 1,600 is kind of our sweet spot that we're trying to go for. And one of the things that I remember uh, in, in talking with you know, about the idea of StopTech, you're not buying a brake component install, you're buying a package that's engineered for your vehicle. Exactly. Tell us a little bit more about uh, some of the stuff that you do to try and ensure that this package works when you bolt it on, as opposed to me going and buying uh, some uh, rotors from this guy, some uh, big calipers from another guy, hoping that everything lines up, not having to re-drill holes. Or, give yeah, us a the main, the main concept that StopTech was built off of is balance brake upgrades, and the whole concept of proper torque output in the caliper level to ensure that the vehicle stops in the shortest distance possible and maintains full functionality with things like ABS, traction control, any kind of stability system that the car has. Still it's functional with that. It's with very sensitive to things that change the torque output in the caliper. And a lot of times, other companies will, will use a best fit approach where they'll have a range of calipers, maybe three or four sizes, and they get close. And stuff still works, but it's not ideal. And we wanted to really drill down and, and, and make it very vehicle specific. So every vehicle you're getting is, has been engineered for that vehicle and guarantee that all the, uh, the functions work and that stopping distances are equal to stock or better. We did the math for you. I mean, the wheel, wheel fitment is the only issue, but everything bolts up and lines up the first time. That's what we pride ourselves on. Okay, what are some of the uh, features of the Touring Kit that makes it you know, a, a great brake sure. package, but at that price point where well, it nice makes it a little more affordable? The nice thing about the Touring Kit is that the piston sizes that we're using are going to match the overall torque output as our big brake kit. So you're, you're getting the same torque output concept on the Touring Kit as you are with a big brake kit. The, the thing is, you're usually the, the main concept is the rotor is going to be an OEM-based rotor. So you're going to be able to find rotors fairly easily. There's much less cost involved with an OEM replacement rotor than there is with a two-piece rotor like we use in our big brake kit. So, so like anything, you, you compromise a little bit of, uh, of lightness, there's a, performance, there's a weight for... Penalty. Uh, they're generally smaller in size, so we can fit more of a stock size wheel, a 16, 17-inch wheel. Um, that's, a, that's another issue with some of the smaller, lighter cars. Yeah. Now, uh, that's great for the average Joe. That's not us. Yeah. We want stuff that's crazy, uh, will cause our uh, women to yell at us when they see the credit card bill, yep. and uh, let our, us show shit off in the garage. So yeah, you go to Cars I, and Coffee and everybody goes, damn. That's what I'm looking yeah. for. And that's, that's what also sets yeah. uh, StopTech up as one of the leaders in the industry. They're not just posers with big brake kits, right. they're pioneers. You can say that for sure, absolutely. All right, and Dino would so make us, us say uh, it if we show did Show us the big well, dog of brakes. Dino, on, on his World Challenge uh, 911 GT3 uh, race car that he runs, he actually runs this set up here. This is our trophy system. It's a full race setup. We run a natural anodized hat, an anodized finish on the caliper. Um, at really high temperatures, paint tends to discolor. How do I go about getting such a badass brake kit set up for my car? And again, does this solve the same issues as the, uh, we'll call it the, uh, 
simpler kit. Yeah, the main concept of a big brake kit is adding heat capacity to the system. You, you're, you're running everything beyond its temperature limit, and you're having problems with fade, where you're not stopping the car once the temperatures get really high. And that's that's the main reason people upgrade to a big brake kit, and why you see supercars that have the bigger rotors, the bigger calipers, that sort of thing. They're just so, driving too fast, isn't that? Slow? Yeah, slow down. That's, that's slow really down. not Come an on. option for most guys. So yeah, we do we do our full trophy setup here. Um, Prices start around 3,500 for a front kit. They can go up from there. Um, we're, any kit that we offer can be ordered as a trophy kit. Uh, some guys like them for the show. Other guys want them for the racetrack. Um, again, it's just a, a further progression on what we already offer with our big brake. It's to really fine tune and, and, and get every last bit of performance out. And give us some range of cars that this might have. So can I get this again on a 65, 66 uh, Mustang yeah. with? Tell you what, put. Put 94 Mustang spindles on it, and it'll bolt right up. Damn, I'm close because I got uh, 70. Actually, we're talking about doing that on the 65. Ah, we're going to well, make we that may, switch. We may yeah, have put, uh, put, put we a modern may... suspension on there, and then they'll bolt right up. So. Oh man, that problem. hurts. That really hurts, ladies and gentlemen. I'm sure you know of the uh, the D, uh, Dino Crescentini's dead story. No. He's been reported as being killed and Oh, yeah, yeah, I saw that. Yeah, it was a, that, it was, was, that was interesting coming into work that day and, and Dino basically saying, oh, by the way, I'm not dead. I'm not this dead. Is, this is the... the uh, for, for our listeners who didn't catch the episode, there was a uh, another racer. His name was Dino Crescentini because apparently it's the Italian John Smith or something. Uh, he was a, a vintage Alfa Romeo racer of all things, which Dino has a history of racing as well. Yeah. So there was, there was a lot of connections that... It yeah, was, it was. It was, was it, almost uncanny how that. that it all was came interesting, together. but how often, it, you know, like I said, how many Dino Crescentinis are there? Yeah. Well, there's one less apparently. That's if I was Dino, I would have actually ditched work for about a week and then come in and go, Nah, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't die. Was anybody? Yeah, yeah. April Fools, yeah. not a good one. Give us like some of the, the range of uh, uh, vehicles that you might find uh, the big brake kit. Yeah, like the I said, I mean, what should we call it? The bigger brake kit, because it's much bigger than the big brake kit. Oh well, yeah, I mean it's it's really the it's a it's a variation on an existing big brake kit. We don't go bigger Hyper, in size with it. We uh, call it our trophy, you know, because you're gonna win with it. Um, but yeah, man, that's awful cocky. That's uh, awful cocky. We we have one with it. That's why I can say that, you know. Um, but yeah, any any kit we offer can be ordered as a trophy kit, and that everything from your your Honda Civics all the way up to your 911s, Corvettes, Vipers, um, Mercedes, BMW, Audi. You know, we, we pretty much cover all the late model high performance vehicles. We even do, you know, full size Chevy trucks, sport trucks. You could do a full race truck set up on your Suburban if you really want to. I got drive. something. Excursion. Diesel Excursion four wheel drive. Diesel Excursion is more along the lines of Dino's parent company, the, the centric parts. They oh, have their fleet performance man, I stuff. Just, I That's can't a, get a free break out of these guys yeah. here at SEMA. This, uh, we, can this get, we can get you pads for an excursion. That's yeah, no problem. So. Really, I, 29 bucks at AutoZone. Oh, no, come on. Uh, throw your plug for your website. All right, yes, Uh We have a full vehicle product search, distributor list, um, great pictures and, and insight on all of our products that we offer. We have a technical white paper section that has a lot of information on brakes, especially things like balance, piston sizes, why that matters, how it affects ABS, and traction control systems. Um, again, it's a big part of why we do what we do, and that's all up there, and we're, we're constantly um, accoladed for, for having that information up there. Uh, pleasure right. meeting you. Thank nice you for the, you the information. Sure. Thanks a lot. For Thanks your time. a lot. Happy, happy to be here. We're here with uh, Chris, Chris Douglas, Douglas from Comp Performance Group. I'm going to say Performance Group because they. They're bigger than the cam. They pretty much they have Comp cams, they have fast electronics, TCI transmission, Inglis, right? What else? There's like seven other companies. I don't even know. Sell what it. About. Sell it, Matt. We can keep going. TCI, RHS, Quartermaster. I mean, shall I go on? Here, here's how my mind's working, Chris. I'm going, okay, uh, injection, I need some pieces there. Uh, TCI, uh, yeah, balancer, I got that covered. It's funny, it's running around the parts that he needs for uh, his own project. Uh, roller, I got the cam card, I'll yeah. be dropping that off. I'm thinking, if you guys could come up with uh, aluminum engine blocking some cylinder heads for me. They've already got hey. uh, for the uh, for Absolutely. this GM. Whoa, yeah, whoa. We've got that. So, so let me think about this. Uh, what else do I need? Yeah, we're your one stop shop. You know what? Nice next, next thing you know, we're just going to ship you the car complete straight to your door. <laughs> so, what fun would that be if I could, Well, I guess I could blow it up and then send it back send and say something's wrong yeah. with the warranty yeah, or absolutely. something like that. That's, yeah. that's more likely that would happen. We have some new products mm -hmm. from you guys and um, that are fancy products because you guys won fancy awards. That's right. For these products. Yeah, let's, let's get a little gander at that so uh, the people like can really appreciate it. 
ribbon or something from the fair. It was uh, given out this morning at the New Products Breakfast, of course, which traditionally kicks off the SEMA show. Um, you know, it really revolves around the 2011 Ford Mustang. There's a, a hot new car, great engine. That's right. It, it's the talk of the show. You know, last year it was kind of the Camaro for the last couple of years, actually. This year. Did they actually release the Camaro yet? Is that out? I'm, I'm, Somebody told me there were a few of them. I don't here. know. I'm not set up on some of the new stuff. We've got camshafts. Now, to put a camshaft in that engine, you also have to work further down the line on the, the cam phasers. So you've got a lot of movement on the cam timing. Now, we should, we should just take a step back. The cam okay. phaser, uh, for people that may not, that, that may be old school like me, now the cam phaser essentially allows the computer to uh, move the cam, advance or retard the cam timing based on some signal that the computer deems necessary for right. optimum fuel, optimum performance. For a race car uh, where you start running big lifts, things, you could get into trouble. And is that where? It could create a mess if, if you didn't handle that situation. Never you know, seen a valve crash before, but yeah. that's me. Well, uh, if you have, it's not a pretty sight and not something we want to hear from our I've customers. Never seen that before, ever. But, yeah, yeah. yeah, what you have to do, you have to work on the, the phaser. You know, it's a great technology advancement when it's used the right way. The problem is you put these high lift camshafts in there, you have piston to valve clearance. So what we have to do is limit the movement on that phaser. That still gives you the benefits. You're still getting a lot of the good benefits from it, but then you're you're also getting the benefits of the camshaft. But this is a, a kit that somebody could do at home, uh, install the cams, and they add, add this. Uh, how difficult is it to, to, to put that piece in? You know, it's not the easiest thing. I'm not going to tell you that it's something that a guy's going to do that's never touched valve train, because as these cars become more complex, you know, there's a flip side to all this great horsepower. They're, they're a little more complicated. Uh, certainly, we try to make it as easy as possible. A lot of these products are drop-in or bolt-on. There's tuning that has to go along with it, of course to get the most out of it, but uh, we do the best we can with what we have to work with on making it easy. This, this is, is uh, the phaser limiter. Mm -hmm. yes, sir. Yep. And that actually drops in. You have one for each of the different slots there. And it's a very simple piece. You know, it's basically a piece of metal that limits the movement as it sweeps uh, advanced and retard. It's made out of some special uh, unobtainium oh, metal. Space that Space age titanium, Thank you. you know, it's just crazy stuff. Engineer tested. Straight Drop off tested. the space shuttle, actually. But the next piece we have is, I, I, I'm guessing, a, a similar yet more extreme uh, use of uh, locking out your cams. And we saw these on, on the Coyote motor over at, at Troy's place. And uh, tell us a little bit about this piece and what, what, in fact, it does. Well, this is the other option on the cam phaser. When you get into really big cams, you get into race applications to where they don't want the sweep of the cam timing. They want to know exactly what they have at all times. So for badasses like us. Yeah, pretty much. We yeah. need some of exactly these, too. Put like this on got. the list. Uh, you just lock it out all together. So uh, that's what this little piece does. Again, not a very complicated piece, but it's certainly functional and it lets us move on to the camshafts and work in the areas that we're certainly familiar with at comp cams. You said you have cams for the for the new 5.0. Do you have, are they naturally aspirated cam upgrades? You have blower cams, turbo cams, nitrous cams? Yes. <laughs> yeah, the answer is yes. We, we essentially are going to cover the whole spectrum. These are very new. We've been doing the testing back in our R&D center. They were, as recent as last week, they were still pounding on these things, trying to get them just right. You know, the, the real secret is we've kind of been waiting on the tuning companies to catch up with us because when you put a camshaft in like this, you have to have some tuning to go along with it. Don't, now, wait, don't you guys own a tuning company? Well, we own a fuel injection, not quite tuning, but... Check, Matt. Yeah, yeah. Okay. We know some people in that business for sure so we've been working side by side now if you throw the factory computer out and go with the fast xfi we can help you out today oh, I see. I see. Yeah. Have you guys been doing any performance testing? Do you have any gains that you can talk about for these for these 5.0 Mustang owners? Very impressive gains. You know, uh, we saw last year we brought out some cam phaser technology for the GM LS7, LS9 type engines. Uh, the gains were very impressive. These are pretty much in line with it, anywhere from 30 to 60 horsepower in some occasions. So major horsepower gains. You know, back in the day, you know, back when you, you were a little bit younger, uh, a camshaft, 20 horsepower was a big deal. Now here we are talking 30 to 60 horsepower. And daily driver, still with computer control Has on the street face. street manners. 
we have guys that are beating us up there. They're ready to modify these cars. It's been amazing. The, the car's been out for like three months now. I don't know what you guys been doing yeah, this whole time. Feet. We just been kind of waiting until SEMA, you know. You're waiting to see if the motor that was in Troy's car worked yeah. Yeah. before you invested any more R&D time. Yeah. That's, that's a fair Those bet. guys have put that one through the ringer, so we feel pretty good about what we got here. And of course, uh, you know, these cams are going to be available. There's a lot of people that are looking to go ahead and make that switch, and we're going to be there for them. Excellent. Chris, we're at uh, uh, TCI, and we've seen the six-speed transmission once before, but you guys have made some changes, some new things for it. Tell us what's going on here. Yeah, you know, we were fortunate. We talked about how the uh, the comp stuff won an award. This one also was in the running for the award. And what we have now is we've kind of broadened the line out. We rolled the 6X six-speed out. So that's a six-speed automatic transmission. Uh, the cool part is this year we have it available for popular Ford, Pontiac, and Chrysler applications. Last year it was GM only. Those other guys, they beat us up, said, look, we got to have something for our car. And uh, this year we've got it. Now, what do you need to dump this in your car for, for for example, Ford application, GM application, yep. anything specific, electronics, or is it just a straight up bolt in, hook up some plumbing to the uh, cooler, good to go? It's a complete kit. We, we send you everything you need. We've got the computer, our easy TCU that operates it. You'll get a shifter. Uh, we've got the right bell housing for your engine, so it'll bolt right up. Uh, everything down to the dipstick and the fluid that comes with it, we got you taken care of. Yep. This is also available with a paddle shifter as well, right? So you can actually do a paddle shifter and you almost treat it like a manual. Mm -hmm. Yeah, a couple options. And uh, you know what maybe some people don't understand about this is you could put it in drive and it'll operate just like a normal automatic six speeds. Or you can put it into manual mode and use the paddle shifter to bump through the gears and race down the track, whatever you want to do with it. It'll handle up to 850 horsepower. You mentioned the TCU. Is that right? And I understand that's uh, the computer that runs it. Yep. Now, how does that work? Well, it's, it's similar to our FAST product, our Easy FI. We set out to make a transmission controller is very easy. Uh, you know, a lot of people, they don't want to pull out the laptop computer. You know, let, let those tuner guys worry about that. I just want to answer a few simple questions, plug it in, and let it work. And uh, so that's what we did. We built a transmission controller that works with this. It works with 4L60E, 4L80E transmissions. Uh, answer four or five simple questions, it does the rest. Sort of like your easy EFI, it's sort of a self-learning system, is that right? So you have to what, drive the car for a little while? Or? Well, pretty much. What it does, it takes the answers to your questions. It builds a profile from it. If you want to adjust it from there, you can. But uh, otherwise, it's built a really solid pre-programmed tune-up that'll work great for you. For kids these days, a lot of them at first think that a manual is the hot ticket. Well, if you think about it, the, all the top drag race cars, they run automatics. Yeah. There's a reason, because I don't care how good a shifter you, you are when it comes to the, racing, you'll never beat the automatic transmission. No, and if you do, yeah. you're lucky. Yeah. You got lucky. You yeah, got lucky. Exactly. Still one of my favorite all-time transmissions was the GM Turbo 400. Mm -hmm. Indestructible. It, uh, I threw a, in the day just an old B&M shift kit in it. That transmission's still running in somebody's car today, guaranteed. And I like that type of stuff. I like the, uh, the, the, the idea that's a six-speed automatic that I don't have to buy from Germany. How's that one? There you go. You know, the 4L80 case that this thing starts out life as is uh, pretty much bulletproof, like you were talking about Turbo 400. It's just, this thing is like a rhino. It's indestructible. You know, I, I would, uh, it, it would, be a shame not to mention that TCI also has a lot of other great stuff. This is a company that's really got a lot of momentum right now. Uh, we're proud of the products that we brought to the show here. You know, everything from our brand new catalog that our customers have been asking for down to new flex plates. And we've even got a fun product that I want to show you guys before you get out of here. So okay, let's look at it now. Yeah, let's, let's uh, go. No better time than now, Matt. Let's jump over and check it out. So you said this is something fun for us. So I'm thinking it's going to be a seven and a half, a seven and a quarter lightweight fly with a clutch kit, something. Different yeah. kind of fun. That's <laughs> more our kind of fun, I think. Different something. kind of fun. You know, okay. we've talked about a lot of performance parts, and TCI is known for performance, but we also like to have fun. We're car guys. You know, we like to uh, do a smoky burnout. You give something back to the teens, let's no, say. Pretty much. Right? You know, our graphic designers, they love this. They got to make this cool video here. And what we have is a TCI unit universal uh, burnout kit with the LED lights. So you could do a pro John Force style burnout. Do you have an idea who your demographic market is for this in reality? Is well, it uh, uh, guys in California that got nothing better to do or you find some of these in Oklahoma? Where are these going? 
I think these are going to go everywhere. I, I can see a, an 18-year-old kid, you know, that loves this kind of thing. We just need a sponsor, a tire company to sponsor this well, product. Well, I was going to ask you, are you subsidized by Kumo? Or it really what? should be because, because we're helping those guys. Kumo, uh, roll, Kumo rolled the uh, colored smoke tires, which I always thought was, I go, what kind of idiot? And then I go, yeah. oh, yeah, there's a smoke. Yeah. yeah. You know those guys got rich off those tires, right? I, I, let's say that the price of Kumo tires now is too expensive for me to buy now. Yeah, exactly. So I had to go down to the next lower level. But, yeah, so uh, interesting stuff. It's a stuff. fun product. You know, again, it locks your front tires so you can do the, the smoky burnout. It's got LED lights so you get the strobe light effect. Uh, I can see kids getting involved in this and liking this little product. You know, well, matter of fact, we'll even let you test drive it. Hit the little button. Well, you hit it. You hit it because I don't want to get ahead. a shock or something. How about that? See, <laughs> you can have that. Yeah. You thought Halloween was over. We brought the strobe lights here. Wow. So even here at SEMA, there's still there's still a sense of humor in the automotive industry because you know the big boss is going. Are you kidding me? What the hell? Yeah. We sold two hundred thousand units. Exactly. Yeah. You know it's. <laughs> It's very similar. Those of you that know our Zex Nitrous product line know that we have this for the lighted purge. And so we've adapted the lights to the, the burnout kit. Uh, I promise you, you will see these on YouTube. Keep I'm, watching. Uh, here's my, my question. Fast and, where are we at now? Fast and Furious 7, 8, uh, 8, something yeah. like So Fast and Furious 8, we will be seeing these guaranteed. Yep. You know, if guys can put duck calls and pop off valves of turbos, they'll they'll install this. Like all we had, uh, yeah, look it up on YouTube. It's look, great. All we had when I was growing up was uh, a station wagon. You could flip the air filter uh, yeah. uh, over <laughs> to make the thermal quad make a louder noise. That was it. That's what we had. Now look at this crap. We got computers. Right. Now what's a, what's a typical price uh, list price? Let's say since uh, this is affordable, it's less than one hundred fifty dollars. So wow. in, a guy can do this in thirty minutes in his driveway. It, it's targeted towards the right demographic that just wants to have fun. So know? the next thing, in, and I know there's already a big market for these, is the uh, cigarette lighter jack engine sound one. Because I bought one. Because I drive. Look at there. He's, He's um, manning combine, up. Yeah, combine this with like a, like a thousand watt kicker stereo, some sound systems. You could do the burnout, Ferrari sound, something. Don't give away our next year's new product. Come on now, give we're, us something. Another one we cracked early here at CarCast. <laughs> well, I think we're, uh, we're rolling on time. Chevy Volt, by the way. Chevy Volt would be badass. Yeah, or a Prius. Totally. Yeah. Prius burn, electric burnout. Perfect. Electric burnout. We're Perfect. ahead of the curve here. Yep. Chris, I want to thank you for showing us as, uh, as always. Uh, appreciate you taking us through some of the products here at the Comp Performance Group and showing us the uh, super slick teenage kit that uh, is coming out. We definitely I, saved the best for the last when it came to that. I know you got one of these on your car, on your truck. <laughs> well, I'm never telling uh, if I do, that's for sure. But we appreciate you guys stopping by. You know, we're, we're really glad to be here at SEMA. It's a great show. Today has been a, an amazing day, a lot of excitement about the industry. And uh, we just want to encourage everyone to, to get out there and remember why we do this. We love our cars. We love to personalize Build them. Build things. I love, exactly. you know, if it wasn't cars, I'd be hammer nails. And I just, yeah. I love mechanical. I love the electronics. Cars today are kind of a great combination for me because it, uh, it, it's got a, almost all the disciplines that I've learned in school and I love doing this stuff. And it'd be sad if our kids don't have stuff that's as dangerous as we had growing up, number one, and, and be as satisfying to say you accomplished something and built something. Well, we're that's car my, guys. Uh, that's my. Uh, yeah, get down uh, off the soapbox now. Calm down. But we're car guys at the Comp Performance Group. We love this industry. We love what we do. We even love the burnout kit. It, it's a fun thing for sure. Chris, throw out a couple of the websites for the different uh, for the different companies we looked at here. Probably the easiest thing because we have so many brands is go to compperformancegroup.com. From there, you can get to all the various brands, comp cams, TCI, fast, all the fun stuff that you've seen here today. And uh, you know they can have it on their own vehicle in a matter of days. Excellent. Thank you so much for your time. I got my final thought here. I, I, I know what the secret product is. Energy drink. Comp energy drink. Haven't we heard that before? No. Yeah. Yes, no. I don't know. Yeah. Have we? Would I don't know. called comp? I guess Never know. Competition Maybe energy. Maybe yeah, next year. I think we're on to something. All right, Sandy. I'm a little dazed, uh, to be quite honest, how much we've seen. And it's only it's, uh, about 20 minutes to 5. We're kicked out of here at 5.01 uh, by some kind of crazy security task force. Uh, anyways, uh, pretty full day, Matt. Uh, Blink and I, we lot going on unbelievably here. could not <laughs> catch a show beer. How's that for how busy no. we were? Adam would never we stop. Not well, let's say this. Beer. There is value to having Adam here because he would have said, we're cutting out two, two or three uh, of the interviews. We're going to get in line, wait for some beers, maybe a glass of red wine and go. 
that's that's how it played out. So maybe we, maybe we were more productive, but yet we may have had more fun if Adam was here chasing down some of the beer. So that that being said, overview of today. What do you think uh, uh, the stuff about uh, the cars you saw, the crazy people we talked to, having mad fits of rage against California's government and uh, the the good products that we saw from GM, Ford, There was definitely Comp. some cool products. I mean, I'm surprised that uh, that uh, guys like Comp Cams can come out with products for the new 5.0 Coyote motor. I mean, that, that car has been yeah, out for deal. a couple of months Look, and it seems uh, like- I got some of that shit already at home. I just didn't want to burst those guys' bubbles. So that, you know, <laughs> yeah. we'll be showing on a future episode of CarCast, the 2011 Coyote parts. But we'll get to that later when I, I show you how you make that same part that they probably get 40, 50 bucks for, $8. <laughs> yeah. Sandy's new tech segment. Tech segment on how to five dollar cam. <laughs> yeah, how to how to save money by copying other people's hard work. Anyways, great stuff that we saw today. Uh, I love talking to the Ford guys, the GM guys, Dr. Jamie, uh, the good doctor as I'll call him because he was fantastic. Uh, the other Jamie, as a matter of fact, from Ford. So the Jamies Jamie are Allison. yeah uh, competitive Jamies at Ford and GM. Interesting stuff on the Fiesta and the Focus stuff that we talked a little bit about. Um, I'm gonna hopefully. Uh, hang out for another day, walk around, get some uh, B-roll, and hope... Uh, There's definitely a lot more to see, so um, you know, we're gonna walk around, check out the show, but I think we're done with CarCast. For I think we're done for the... Let's finally get the freaking beer in us, man. Let's, let's go. Let's do it. All let's right, go grab out. a beer.